This video provides details on the SP TSRV, a set of ARM based processor boards with multiple RS232 serial channels and Ethernet ports, running communication software tailored for the SCADA industry. The name and strange font, SP TSRV, indicates that the unit can run ASE's SPT SCADA protocol translator or TSRV terminal server software applications. SP TSRV software applications provide solutions for multiple use cases in various SCADA communication networks. Problems that the SP TSRV software may solve include unavailability of infrastructure components such as lease lines that used to be readily available from the telephone company. Issues involved with replacing aging R2 technology, migration to newly purchased SCADA masters, or integration with neighboring utilities due to acquisition or sharing of resources. Examples include replace serial communication with IP, removing leased line dependency, convert older technology protocols to newer standards add communication line redundancy, dual port on RTU to two masters with the same or different protocols, and the ability to limit or segment access of each, provide a second passive path to an RTU for commissioning of new masters, introduce a simulated point change load for master validation. While there may be several products that can provide some of the solutions listed above, ASE products offer unique capabilities. These include support for bit protocols such as Conatel, CDC, Bancom, TRW, REDAC, and BTAC, which are not compatible with most standard computer serial ports, and connectivity to ASE's ASE 2000 communication test set. An engineer or technician can connect to the SPT unit via IP to monitor communication on any remote network or serial port. SPT SRV hardware is a series of ARM based processor boards with four or eight serial channels and one Ethernet port. A 16-channel unit is also available and is packaged as two 8-channel processor boards in a single enclosure. Power supplies from 5 to 160 volt DC and 110 or 220 volt AC are available. As a protocol translator, the SPT software is supported in the Windows Configuration Management Tool and a browser-like data viewer and diagnostic tool. The configuration tool, the SPT editor, is used to assign a protocol and a direction, master or slave, to each serial communication channel with each channel getting its own designation. In theory, a 16-channel unit could operate with 16 different protocols. The SPT application supports the following protocols. More are added as customer requests arrive. Please contact ASE for more details should your protocol not be displayed. The SPT SRV supports many protocols but an example here will show conversion of a Modbus serial device to a DMP LAN WAN network protocol. The same approach can be used for converting other supported protocols. The startup screen of the editor, SPT for edit, appears as shown. The database configuration is entered in two areas within the configuration tree in the left pane. From master defines external master devices communicating to the SPTSRV. In this area, the SPTSRV will simulate a slave device. 
2RTU defines external slave devices communicating to the SPTSRV. In this area, the SPTSRV will operate as a master. To define a protocol, communication channel, device, points, and properties within each node, right-click on the node and select from the options presented. First, right-click on the 2R2 node. Select Modbus Protocol. Right-click on the Modbus node and add a line. Selecting a serial line maps the Modbus device to that line and enables Modbus RTU or Modbus ASCII protocol. Selecting a network adapter enables Modbus TCP protocol. Other options allow selections of advanced features such as configuration of redundant lines. As each node is created, in this case the serial port node, Associated properties are shown in the right pane. There are many properties explained in the documentation. In most cases, the default values can be used. In rarer cases, values need to be examined and possibly modified. Baud rate has the obvious meaning, but leaving the default value at auto detect will cause the software to determine the correct baud rate at startup. It may take some time, even a few minutes, so entering the known baud rate is more efficient. The other Modbus property worthwhile to change is parity. Modbus allows none, even or odd, and seems not to document a preference. We have seen units operating on each of the three possibilities. Next, we add the Modbus device by right-clicking on the serial port, add device, and the device gets created as we want. The default ID is 1, which is the slave address, which we can change if we want to, but not at this time. Next, we need to create the set of input and output points at the Modbus device by right-clicking on device and selecting Add Object. This produces a list of objects supported by this protocol. We notice that the list of objects is quite a bit longer than the native type of objects supported by Modbus protocol. We have the normal 16-bit holding register, holding register long, which is 32 bits, holding register float, which is a floating point number, and so on for many different types of holding register representations requested by our customers over the year. In this case, we select the normal 16-bit holding register, right-click on this to add points, and add points 0 to 7. We do the same thing for input coils. And some output coils. To complete configuration of the Modbus device, we just have to enter scanning parameters. In this case, we have defined holding registers and input coils, both of which need read requests. To do this, right-click on the device, add request, read. Well, one read request here with an undefined source. Go over here to source and select input coils. We now have a request to read input coils at a frequency of two seconds. All times in the SPT editor are entered in milliseconds. Then similarly we add a read request for the holding registers 
and maybe these we want scanned at a slower frequency so we can enter 10 seconds. This completes configuration of the Modbus device. We have the Modbus device created. Now we need to create the DNP device and link the Modbus points up to the DNP. This is a very simple step. On the From Master node, right click and add DNP protocol. On the DNP protocol node, right click and add a line. Since we're mapping to DNP LAN WAN, that's the network adapter. Right click a network adapter, add a DNP device, which the ID defaults to one, which we'll keep. Then left click on the Modbus device and drop it over the DNP device. The editor finds all of the objects at the Modbus device and suggests where these would be linked to in a DMP device. In the first case, the input coils would be linked to binary inputs as a suggestion. That's OK. So we select OK. The holding registers will be linked to analog inputs. That also seems right. And the output coils will be linked to DNP relay blocks. That's also OK. The DNP device is now defined. The linkage is complete. If we expand one of these objects, for example, binary input, and click on any of the points, that point ID turns yellow, as does the point it's linked to. The configuration is now defined. To activate the configuration file, we need to be connected to the SPT device, which we are here in a network connection to this IP address. Serial connections are also possible. Once connected, we hit the download target. The configuration file is downloaded and starts almost immediately. We see informational messages, such as line 20,000, which is the DNP connection port, posted listening command, startup line one is running, which is the Modbus device, and other information as it appears will be shown. So in summary, we have completely configured a Modbus device, connected to a DNP device, and activated that configuration. This completes the video on configuring the SPT for communication. Some advanced features of the SPT are described in the next video.